Okay, we're live. Have a good session. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, uh, hello, everyone. So welcome to the uh, session of uh, multi-party computation two. So I'm coming uh, from University of Wollongong, Australia. Uh, we'll co-chair this uh, session with Professor Beimo. And uh, we have five presentations. Uh, and the first uh, uh, presentation is uh, on the exact round complexity of best of both words, uh, multi-party computation. And uh, this work, uh, the, this work uh, uh, is by uh, Apita uh, Patra. Divya uh, Ravi and uh, Swati uh, Singla and uh, uh, Divya will give the presentation. Thank you. So this talk is on the exact term complexity of best of both worlds multi-party computation. And this is a joint work with Kalpita Patra and Swati Singla. So suppose you have n mutually distrusting parties out of which T are corrupt and they want to compute some combined function on their private inputs. MPC allows them to do so while ensuring that the output is correct and that nothing beyond the output is revealed. So there are various notions of MPC, among which the strongest is guaranteed output delivery, where at the end of the protocol, everyone is guaranteed to get the output. A slightly weaker notion is fairness, where either everyone gets the output or nobody gets the output. And even further weaker notion is unanimous support, where it may happen that the corrupt parties obtain the output and the honest parties don't, but there is an agreement amongst the honest parties. <laughs> And the last and weakest notion is selective abort, where it may happen that even the honest parties amongst themselves are not in agreement. So here the notions are listed from strongest to weakest and the implications follow accordingly. So there is a famous feasibility result by Cleave, which says that GOD and fairness is possible only in honest majority. This means that in dishonest majority, the best that one can hope for would be unanimous abort. So now the two worlds that we are referring to when we say best of both worlds is honest majority and dishonest majority. So the advantage of honest majority protocols is that they can achieve fairness and GOD, but on the downside, their security breaks down if the number of corruptions is greater than or equal to n by two. Whereas the protocols in dishonest majority are able to tolerate up to n minus one corruptions, but they don't achieve fairness in GOD even if only a single party is corrupt. So both these protocols work very well in the respective settings, but their guarantees uh, break down in the other setting. And this is a problem in situations where you don't know in advance how many parties the adversary is going to corrupt. So a solution is to use best of both worlds MPC, which is compatible with both the settings. So such protocols achieve fairness and GOD if the number of corruptions is less than n by two, and the same protocol simultaneously achieves unanimous abort if the number of corruptions happens to be greater than or equal to n by two. So in our work, we looked at two types of best of both world protocols. The first one is the ideal best of both worlds, which gives the best guarantee of GOD in honest majority and the best possible guarantee of unanimous abort in dishonest majority. But for this class, we need to assume that the sum of the thresholds in the honest and dishonest majority setting, that is S plus T, is less than n. So this restriction follows from the feasibility result of Fishai, Katz, and others. And the second class that we looked at, that simultaneously gives the second best guarantee of fairness in honest majority and continues to give the best guarantee of UA in dishonest majority. So here, since we relax the notion from GOD to fairness in honest majority, this additional restriction on N is not required. So we looked at the round complexity of both these classes of protocols. So let's uh, see what is the round complexity landscape of MPC. So in the honest majority setting, these existing results settle the question of exact round complexity of fair and GOD protocols in various types of setup. That is the plane model, the common reference string or the CRS model, and the CRS plus PKI model where PKI refers to public key infrastructure. And in the dishonest majority setting, these existing works settle the question for protocols achieving selective abort and unanimous abort. So we wanted to study this question for best of both world MPC. So we looked at these two classes of best of both world protocols, and these were the lower bounds that we established. Among these, some of them are already implied from existing results, but the others were new, which we show in our work. And for the upper bounds, uh, we designed a new compilers that give us matching upper bounds for all the cases, 
except this one case of plane model and GOD UA best of both worlds. So here we gave a five round construction and the lower bound is four. So there is a one round gap that we left open. But other than this, all the other bounds turned out to be tight. So we nearly settled the question of exact round complexity of these two classes of protocols and these three different types of setup. And the main takeaway is that best of both world protocols are actually not at all demanding in terms of round complexity, because in all cases, their optimal round complexity turned out to be either the same or at most one more than uh, the maximum of the respective bounds in dishonest majority and in honest majority. So this uh, concludes my talk and uh, thank you for listening. Uh, thank you, uh, Divya, for the for the uh, nice presentation. So, do we have any question from the audience? Okay, uh, maybe I ask a short uh, question. So, you mentioned that you uh, actually your results uh, are based on a compiler. So, uh, you mean you uh, the compiler takes the uh, like the protocols from the separate words and then convert to the uh, protocol in the best of uh, uh, both word protocol. Is that correct? Yeah, so we begin with any round optimal protocol in dishonest majority and then boost its security so that it achieves best of both words. Yeah, okay, so, okay. so you can bring any round optimal underlying protocol and then you would get the best of both word protocol. Okay. So uh, yeah, it looks the uh, round complexity does not increase uh, like a uh, but uh, how, how about the uh, concrete, like the, for example, the communication complexity? So, uh... so I mean, it was, so like compare it, to, uh, you can compare it to the dishonest majority protocols because anyway, like they are um, no, not that efficient compared to honest majority, but our focus was not on efficiency. It was on feasibility. So but to be honest, they, they were not, they did not turn out to be like very efficient, but the overhead compared to dishonest majority protocols is not, too much, at least for the fair best of both worlds. For the fair best of both worlds, it was very much comparable. But for the GOD, we ended up incurring uh, a lot more complexity. It's still polynomial, but uh, like there was uh, a lot more overhead. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Divya. Yes. For the case for the case of uh, the gold uh, UA, what yes. do you think the round complexity is four or five? In case of Gordia, what is the round complexity in? I'm sorry. You have a gap of a lower bound of four and an upper bound of five. What yes. do you think yes. the true answer is? What do I think? I'm sorry, your audio is not super clear. What do you think the true answer is? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I think it should be four because, uh, like, based on like sub exponential uh, like assumptions, there, it is possible to get four, but we didn't have the, uh, like, we still need to explore more tools to get four, but I think it will turn out to be four. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, do we have any other question from, from the audience? Okay, uh, if no question, maybe we can move to the next next presentation and we can still have questions uh, after all the presentations. Thank you, uh, Divya. So the second presentation is uh, MPC with uh, synchronous security and uh, asynchronous uh, res responsive, uh, responsiveness. And uh, this work is uh, done by Chen Da Liu Zhang, Julian uh, Loss, uh, Yuli Mar uh, Mora, uh, Tao Moran, and uh, Daniel uh, Judy. So uh, Chen Da will give the presentation. Okay, so thanks. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. So I'm Chen Da. As you said, this is uh, joint work with Julian, Wally, Tal, um, and Daniel. And the paper is on secure multi-party computation or MPC. And actually will be in line of the previous talks, which is uh, very nice. So. One of the most prominent uh, models in MPC is uh, the synchronous model. And here parties proceed synchronously in rounds, right? So each party knows the current rounds. And in each round, it reads the messages from the previous round 
maybe does some local computation and sends some messages for the next round. And, and in reality, this round structure can be achieved assuming synchronized clocks and an upper bound on the network communication delay. So synchronous protocols are very popular. Uh, this model comes handy because of the strong security guarantees that one can achieve. So these protocols can tolerate a very high corruption threshold. So as, uh, for example, assuming standard uh, setup assumptions, we know that one can achieve the strongest uh, type of security, full security, or as Divya said, guaranteed output delivery, where parties are guaranteed to obtain the correct output for any adversary that can corrupt up to and half uh, parties. And one can even tolerate an arbitrary number of uh, corruptions if one settles for a notion of, for a weaker notion of security with abort or even um, unanimous abort, right? And, and of course, with, with no fairness. And here, this means that honest parties either get the correct output or, or every honest party outputs bottom. But it's not fair because the adversary can learn the output, right? So um, moreover, in these kinds of protocols, all inputs from honest parties are taken into account for the computation. So what is the downside? The downside, at least one of the drawbacks is that if we think about running a synchronous protocol over something like, like the internet, where the actual uh, delay is hard to predict, we have to set the round length uh, big delta large enough to accommodate any possible uh, delay in the network. And this means that for, an, uh, for a synchronous protocol to actually work, the big delta has to be set much larger than the typical network delay, which I denote as a small delta. So the speed of synchronous pro protocols is proportional to the conservatively assumed uh, worst case delay. And hence one could say that they are slow when executed over the internet. So how can we design uh, fast protocols in reality? Well, one option is to use uh, asynchronous protocols. So in an asynchronous protocol, we do not need to know any upper bound delay. So these protocols are kind of message driven. So one can think intuitively that these protocols are, are greedy. As soon as a party gets enough messages to proceed, um, they proceed, right? Uh, and on the upside, this immediately implies that the protocols are so-called uh, responsive. And this means that the speed uh, of an asynchronous protocol is proportional uh, to the actual network delay, small delta. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the drawback is that uh, we all know, or it is well known that uh, asynchronous protocols can only tolerate up to n third corruptions. And this is, one can see that this is optimal. And also unavoidably the computation um, ignores the inputs of up to T uh, slow parties. It, it, this could be that the, the computation ignores the inputs of up to T slow honest parties. So in, in this work, we asked the natural question of whether it is possible to leverage uh, synchronous MPC protocols to also achieve this nice feature that asynchronous protocols have, namely to also achieve uh, responsiveness. So more concretely, we investigate if there is a protocol that simultaneously kind of this, this best of both worlds uh, uh, direction that simultaneously achieves uh, full security with responsiveness up to a small threshold uh, T of corruptions and up to a larger threshold uh, large T, some form of extended security, which would be some form of security that one can achieve with a synchronous protocol which in, in our work, we consider uh, full security or uh, unanimous support. And, and in this work, we, we show that for the case of uh, unanimous support required as extended uh, security, this is possible if and only if the large T plus two times the small T is smaller than N. And for the case of uh, full security as extended security, we, we, we need in addition the constraint that uh, the large T is smaller than n half. And this comes from, from Cleve's uh, impossibility result, right? So thank you very much for listening. I, and I'm happy to, to answer questions.
Okay, uh, thank you, Chanda, for the presentation. So do we have any question uh, from the audience? So I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have settled for a selective abort or some uh, a weaker notion of uh, security, can you do you still need T plus two T smaller than N, or can you relax and uh, relax uh, the condition? This is this is a very good question. Um... I'm not sure, actually, because the impossibility result really uses the fact that that everyone obtains the same output, right? So, so it could be that, uh, I mean, the, the best one can get, I guess, is uh, t plus small t smaller than n, because this is what, uh, um, I guess, this, this, this lower bound comes, comes from cuts, I think, uh, like one of these best of both worlds uh, papers, but, but um, Maybe one can do something better than T plus two T. Yes, we we don't know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other question from the audience? Uh, maybe I, I also have another short question. So um, I I actually watched your full full presentation. So uh, mm -hmm. I think. In Protocol you combine the two uh, protocols. One is uh, uh, asynchronous, uh, like uh, you you run the asynchronous protocol, and then uh, if uh, it doesn't uh, like uh, uh, work through, then you will run the synchronous uh, protocol, mm -hmm. right? So in this case, um, um, it's possible that, for example, if uh, the same set of uh, parties they run the same input and the same function, but uh, they may get different outputs, right? In, if you run it twice. Uh, yes, yes, that, that's a, that's a dangerous, yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, will, will this become like a, uh, like a covered channel to, because of different behavior, will, will, will there be any potential security issue like a covered channel uh, to be introduced? No, so what we do is we run the asynchronous protocol but, but you don't learn the real output. You learn an encrypted version of the output, so no information is revealed. And then we run some kind of uh, checking protocol that checks whether, um, whether enough parties obtain this, this ciphertext. And if this happens, they will all decrypt the ciphertext. Um, and if not, then, then, uh, then uh, it's, it's ensured that the adversary didn't learn, would not be able to decrypt this ciphertext, so it's safe to run the, the fallback, basically, the synchronous part. Uh, but the, like, for example, the transcript size will be different. And uh, uh, for example, oh, if you, you just- know, you, know when, when, you know when you are running both protocols or only one. Yes, this you know. Okay, okay. So this, this is not uh, like, a, this won't uh, no. cause any, any issue. No, I, I, I don't think so. No. And coming, coming back to Amo's uh, question, um, <clears throat> now I thought a, a bit about this, the small t has to, has to be uh, smaller than n third, right? This is required and, and this bound comes from asynchronous protocols. But maybe it's true that, that, um, that we could have a, a better trade-off, but the small t has to always be smaller than n third. Okay, uh, any other question from the audience? Okay. If no question, uh, uh, thank you, Chanda, for the presentation. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will move to the next one. Uh, the next presentation is uh, asymptotically good multiplicative uh, LSSS over Galois strings and applications to MPC over uh, ZP2K. Uh, the, Authors are Mark Abspo, uh, Ron, uh, Ronald Kramer, uh, Ivan Damgard, Daniel uh, As uh, Asku Asku uh, Matthew uh, Rambo, uh, Chao Pingxing, and uh, Chen Yuan. And uh, Mark will give the presentation. Yes, thank you for the introduction. 
Can you, uh, is the audio on the slides good? Yes. All, good. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, welcome. I'm um, um, going to talk about um, how we achieve asymptotically good um, multiplicative linear secret sharing schemes over, um, over Galois rings um, and how we apply it uh, to MPC. So um, we started with a little bit of maths. Um, so we are, we are going to be interested in working over these rings of integers modulo prime power. Uh, and I guess the most interesting case here is for p equal to 2. So uh, we would like to be able to work over these uh, rings of integers modulo a, a power of 2, basically. So if we, uh, slightly, if we take p to be general, we have this, uh, this ring homomorphism from uh, the integers modulo p to the k z. Uh, and if we have this reduction uh, modulo p, which we call pi, uh, and it goes down to uh, to FP, the finite field with uh, with P elements. Um, so this this homomorphism is, is surjective. So if we have any uh, any element downstairs in the finite field, then we can take a lift uh, and get an element in the in the ring. This is not uh, uniquely defined, but I mean, this, since this this map is surjective, but not uh, not injective in general, uh, but we can always find such a such a lift. Now, if we, instead of taking the, um, the finite field of a prime order downstairs, we go to a, an arbitrary finite field. What we get upstairs, the, the sort of the, the corresponding analog will be a Galois ring. This is precisely what a Galois ring is. So uh, we know that for this finite field, we can write it as the, the quotient of this polynomial ring in FPX divided by some uh, monic irreducible polynomial in, uh, in, in FPX. Um, and this also holds for this, this Galois ring. We can write it as this quotient, but this is not, I mean, this is not too important. Um, the important thing is that we can, we still have this reduction modulo P homomorphism from this Galois ring, which we parameterize by uh, P, K, and H, where H is sort of the um, degree of this extension of FQ over FP. Um, and uh, we still get this uh, uh, surjective homomorphism. Um, so we can also lift elements uh, from FQ to R. And uh, well, lifting elements is not very interesting, but in this work, we are interested in, in how, whether we can lift larger structures, um, concretely, whether we can lift uh, linear codes and linear secret sharing schemes. Um, the goal of this is um, because we know very well how linear secret sharing schemes over fields work, um, but we'd, we'd also like to do uh, multi-party computation and uh, secret sharing over these Galois rings. So it would be nice if we were able to use the theory over fields to get secret sharing schemes over the Galois ring. Um, and why, uh, so we already know how to do a uh, uh, Shamir secret sharing scheme over, uh, over Galois rings. This, this has been done before. Um, so in this work in particular, we're going to target asymptotically good uh, secret sharing schemes. Uh, if you look at Shamir's scheme, then uh, the number of uh, players is bounded by the size of the finite field. This is uh, well known. Um, so if you want to do MPC over a finite field and you want to use Shamir's scheme, then uh, if you have a lot, like if, if you have an asymptotically large number of players, then eventually you need to move to an extension field in order to accommodate, uh, accommodate the number of players. So theoretically, uh, uh, even if you have a um, uh, multi-party computation protocol that's sort of near linear, uh, in practice it will be, or, or theor it will be, uh, you will have this n log n uh, communication complexity, and where this log n comes from having to move to field extension, if you have a number of players going to infinity. However, in practice, because you're already working over a large finite field, usually this you don't need to move to this field, field extension, so this log n factor sort of doesn't come into play. Um, but over Galois rings, this situation is slightly different because um, even if you have a large Galois ring, because p to the k is large, you still need um, for this extension h, um, uh, sorry, sorry, if we have um, a Shamir secret sharing scheme over Galois rings, the number of players is bounded by p to the h. So this is not the size of the Galois ring because that's p to the k, k times h. Um, but it's, instead, it's the size of the residue field of, uh, of the Galois ring. So that means this log n factor, it kicks in much faster. Uh, so in practice, we, it, it, uh, it kicks in straight away. Even if you have just four players, you already need to move to, uh, uh, and you're working over uh, uh, p equals two, 
and you already need to move to this extension. So this is why this, this problem is more urgent for galleries. So this is why we, uh, why we decided to tackle this. Uh, so if we have an asymptotically good secret chain schemes, then we get true linear multiplication. So even for a number of layers and for length infinity. Um, now there's a, a couple of uh, sort of, so we're looking at information theoretic MPC, so unconditional security. Uh, and there's a couple of different uh, parameter regimes. Uh, and I've, I've illustrated some of the, the sort of the first protocols, I think, to, to achieve the, the asymptotic uh, state of the art. Um, so we have the regime for t less than n over 3. Um, in this case, we're able to uh, achieve perfect security. And we use what is called strong multiplication, which means that um, uh, um, uh, basically, if you multiply two code words, then you still have the n minus t uh, uh, reconstruction for the product. Um, over fields, this, uh, um, uh, I mean, you can use Shamir scheme and get this n log n complexity. Uh, the asymptotically good um, uh, secret sharing uh, and corresponding MPC is also known uh, using algebraic geometry codes. Uh, and for rings, this um, this has also uh, uh, been done. As I mentioned, we know uh, Shamir secret chain schemes over Galler rings uh, works. Um, and uh, also, uh, uh, there was a result by uh, Kramer, Rambo, and Ching um, that uh, basically transported the, the algebraic geometry arguments to Galler rings. However, this, this is very sort of like complicated algebraic geometry. Uh, and in our approach, we sort of like use the results over fields directly. So we're, we're able to use the algebraic geometry over fields and then sort of like have a, a lifting argument and show that everything is preserved. However, we do not preserve strong multiplication. So instead we target the regime where T is less than N over two. We just need regular multiplication. Um, and uh, uh, um, so in, a, in our application, we're able to use results over fields and get um, Actually, this should be uh, O of N here. Um, uh, linear complexity for uh, the T less than, oh, sorry, no, this, um, this is correct. Um, so the reason I, I've written T less than uh, uh, a half minus epsilon times N is because we need some, some gap between the reconstruction and privacy thresholds. Um, uh, otherwise, this, this, uh, I mean, this is just required for these asymptotically good uh, secret sharing schemes. Um, the only scheme that doesn't require this gap is Shamir scheme. Um, so, um, uh, um, uh, yeah, in this gap, we're able to achieve linear complexity uh, in the online phase um, and n log n uh, in the offline phase, but I will get to this in, in a second. So, um, regarding secret sharing, the main question we ask, like, if we have this uh, code, uh, linear code over a finite field, and then we lift it to the Galois ring, what properties of the code are preserved? And we show that if we have that this, uh, this code upstairs is a free module, then uh, we preserve the distance of the code, we preserve the dual distance, we preserve uniformity, which means that if we, like, um, if we project down to a single coordinate, we get the, the whole space, so the full uh, uh, Galois ring R. Uh, but multiplica multiplication is not preserved. Um, multiplication is the uh, looks at the square of the of the code uh, and basically says that uh, the, the the square so c square is not the um, the whole space r to the n. Uh, for p uh, is larger than two, we're able to um, preserve like we're able to choose a specific lift that preserves uh, a self orthogonal code. So if we have a self orthogonal code and we want to lift it, then uh, we show a specific lift. Uh, that works and preserves self-orthogonality. And this is nice because self-orthogonal codes have this multiplicative property. So we're able to uh, retain this. Uh, however, we're mostly interested in the case P equals to two, so that's sort of unfortunate, but we uh, have an additional, we basically use an existing technique where we use <coughs> secret sharing using both uh, the code C and C dual. And then uh, this also gets uh, multiplication. However, the downside of this is that the share size doubles. Um, yeah. So uh, the result of, of fields that we sort of invoke here is uh, uh, if you have this uh, sequence of linear codes with the length tending to, uh, to infinity, and you can sort of regard the relative distance and relative dual distance of this family of codes. 
which is just the, the limit of the distances uh, over the length. And uh, over fields, we know that uh, if we have uh, some, some epsilon uh, real positive number and um, um, Q, the size of the finite field, uh, bigger than two over epsilon, then there's this family of codes over F, FQ uh, square that has this relative distance and relative dual distance approaching one half. Like we can get as close as we want to, but the, the size of the field will, uh, will increase. Uh, and this results also holds for a family of self-dual codes using a slightly different argument. Um, and now, since we know that the distance and dual distance are, are preserved when we lift the Galois rings, we just take such a family of codes and then lift each of the codes individually to uh, the Galois ring. And then we also have this family of uh, uh, asymptotic, this asymptotically good family of codes over the Galois ring. Um, and with this, um, we can restore uh, we can get multiplication as, uh, as I said before using this trick, and then we get the arithmetic secret chain. So, in the application to um, Mark, Mark, uh, your time is already, if it was supposed to be a five minute talk, it's about 10, more than 10 minutes talk. Oh, so, really? Sorry. Okay. Then, uh, um, uh, can you conclude? Yeah, I will leave it at this. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mark. I think uh, this slide shows the uh, main results. Right. Yeah. So, okay. So maybe uh, uh, we, because it's uh, over time, maybe we leave the question to the end of the session. Uh, is that okay with you, Mark? Yeah, sure. Okay. Maybe I, I will pass uh, uh, to uh, Professor Bemo for the next two presentations. Okay. Is the next uh, speaker ready? Uh, yeah. So the next talk is secret on, on recitation, frankly, encoding and the application to statistical secure multi-party computation by Andre, Andreas uh, Dalskov, Elsa Lee, Eduardo Soria Vasquez, and Eduardo will be, be giving the talk. Thanks for the introduction. So let's dive right into it. So this talk is about the cafe, as you can see in the picture, because cafe is easy to pronounce. Um, so what we are uh, looking at in this talk is a mixed model of computation. We will have uh, arithmetic circuits over the integers modulo to the k, uh, together with some bitwise operations. And uh, for simplicity, we will only be looking at an adversary that corrupts less than a third of the parties. And uh, we only aim for security with a board, but our results can be easily generalized to other settings. So this is just to keep everything simple. Um, and as you could see from the previous presentation, uh, there's a problem when one want, when, when you want to do a MPC over either F2 or set you to the K. And the reason is that you cannot do like Shamir secret sharing and you need to move to this uh, degree D Galois extension, right? And the reason behind that, uh, if, you, if you missed the previous talk, is uh, that you, in order to interpolate, uh, in the field case, it's easy to see, right? You only have two points, that's not enough for having multiple parties. But if you are in the ring case, you need to find a set of elements such that their pairwise differences are invertible. So that's the reason for moving to this uh, Galois ring. Um, but what I also want to highlight uh, is that the degree of this extension is kind of small in practice. It's only logarithmic in the number of, of parties plus an extra point for the secret. So this will be uh, something important to take into account. So, okay, how, how do we do MPC in this, uh, when we want to compute over these two rings? Uh, there's a long list of works where they just embed uh, uh, F2 into F2 to the D in order to do MPC and then for the, for the ring case, so for the integers modulo 2 to the k, uh, the first work doing this uh, information theoretic MPC over there was uh, last year by uh, the previous speaker and other authors. So that's uh, kind of disappointing because then we are wasting this uh, factor of the uh, overhead all the time. Uh, so what one can do in order to avoid this uh, uh, extent, to amortize the cost of this extension is use these reverse multiplication friendly embeddings. So these were introduced by Cascudo et al at Crypto 18. 
and uh, later on they were also extended uh, so the, this was on the field setting and later on they were extended to the ring setting by some of the authors of, of that paper and uh, the these works are very nice but they are also more concerned about asymptotics rather than concrete efficiency and uh, as we said this uh, this extension degrees logarithmic in the number of parties so it's maybe it's not asymptotics what you want to look at in practice. Uh, so what we do in, in this work is generalizing this concept of uh, reverse multiplication friendly embeddings. So these are our CAFES, our circuit amortization uh, friendly encodings. And uh, so what we can do is uh, have more expressive circuits at the cost of one multiplication over the extension ring. So we can do these uh, parallel circuits the same way that the RMFEs do, but we can also do other things like inner products or uh, circuits with multiplicative depth one. Um, and the core idea to do this is that rather than embedding the base ring over the extension, naturally, uh, what we're going to do is we are going to have some uh, encoding map that takes delta elements from the base ring and puts them over uh, the Galois ring. And uh, let, let's get more details about that. So imagine that you have an arithmetic circuit that takes two delta one inputs and has delta two outputs. And that you have two set two K linear maps, which are our encodings an input encoding and output encoding that satisfy this relation uh, uh, shown in the slide. So if you multiply two input encodings and you add an output encoding to that, you get an output encoding of the circuit evaluated on the input encoded values x and y plus the output encoded value r. And this might seem like a very obscure requirement, uh, but now we can, uh, if you have some pre-processed correlated randomness, so imagine that you have an input encoding uh, of the value r, so you see it shared as a, as a degree t polynomial, and you have an output encoding of this value r as well, as a degree 2t uh, polynomial, you could share that. Now, whenever you compute the standard uh, degree reduction trick to compute multiplication, uh, you can keep uh, the invariant that uh, the output of this multiplication is going to be the input encoding of the circuit applied to both these uh, inputs x and y. So, you know, that's, uh, I, I will not go through this in detail. If you stare at it for a minute, you will see that everything, this is exactly what you need and everything goes through. Um, so now we have reduced the problem to producing this uh, correlated encoded randomness. And uh, furthermore, we show a way to produce this uh, a bit more efficiently than before by restricting ourselves to this uh, statistical security. Uh, so one of the things to take into account here is that uh, these encodings are set to K linear. So this randomness extractor, be it a um, hyperinvertible matrix or a T resilient function, whatever you want to use, this is defined over the Galois ring. So you need to be careful about uh, reasoning uh, here now because you need to don't mix where you're linear over. And uh, you also need to be careful with uh, zero divisors. Um, but this is, uh, we can easily solve this and you can check the paper. Um, furthermore, our encodings are very flexible in the sense that you can mix and match them. So if you have a circuit that has some inner product and then it has some uh, single instruction, multiple data kind of structure and then inner product again and so on, you can just mix an input encoding for uh, one of for the inner products with an output encoding for the single instructions, for example. And uh, we also have an implementation. Uh, for the sake of keeping this session short, I won't uh, talk much about it. Uh, but uh, this is uh, this is really more efficient in practice. Um, so just to, to go to the contributions, we introduce uh, circuit amortization friendly encodings or CAFES for uh, Galois rings. So if you set K to be equal to one there, you also get the result for finite fields. 
This is more general than the reverse multiplication friendly encodings uh, paradigm introducing crypto eating. Uh, we are also concerned about concrete rather than asymptotic efficiency because this extension degree is only logarithmic in the number of parties. And our framework easily allows to, to build these different kind of encodings and mix and match them. Uh, we also improve uh, the efficiency of generating these uh, double shares or these encoded double shares in our case. So this gives uh, faster reprocessing for these uh, Berlieva here kind of protocols. And uh, so something I didn't mention on, on these slides is that we also uh, have a nice way of producing these uh, double authenticated bits in both the Galois ring and the finite field. So we can uh, produce uh, the same encoding of bits in the Galois ring and in the finite field at the cost of producing these encoded bits only on the, on the Galois ring. So we basically get the field counterpart, counterpart for free and this is due to this uh, projection. Uh, so this is very nice and this allows us to, to switch uh, nicely between encodings of values over set G to the K and encodings of values uh, in F2. And uh, yeah, we also have an implementation. So we, we estimate that if you want to, to compute some SVM over uh, like 250 images in parallel, this is up to like seven times faster than the previous protocol uh, from TCC last year that shows how to do information theory can PC over set you to the game. Um, so we'll, with that, I will just take any questions. Thank you. So I don't see any questions and it's time to move for the next uh, talk. So thank you, Eduardo. Oh, yeah, are you ready? Thanks. Yes. Okay, the next talk is efficient to keep a fully secure computation via distributed zero knowledge proof by Elette Boyle, Neil Gilboa, Yuval Isha, and Ariel North. And Ariel will be giving the talk. Yes, thank you uh, for the presentation. So this talk is about, uh, so the setting we consider is honest majority MPC uh, with computation of arithmetic or Boolean circuits defined over fields or uh, the rings uh, Z of two to the K. We consider malicious security with uh, two security guarantees, security with a boat when, where the adversary is allowed to prevent the parties from receiving the output and full security where the output is guaranteed to be delivered and we know that in general, this can be achieved only in the honest majority setting. And the main motivation for this work was the question, can we achieve a full malicious security with the same amortized communication cost as for semi-honest? And of course, without giving up on concrete efficiency, which in this work is interpreted as using only cheap symmetric crypto, such as a black box use of any PRG. And we have uh, two results uh, in our paper. The first result is a protocol for malicious security with a boat with the same amortized communication cost as for semi-honest. This protocol is for arbitrary number of parties, uh, works over fields and rings, and with any linear secret sharing. Uh, the second result is a protocol for full malicious security, again, with the same amortized communication cost as for semi-honest. This protocol is only for constant number of parties because it is based on replicated secret sharing. And we know that uh, in this secret sharing scheme, the size of the share grows exponentially with the number of parties. Now, both uh, protocols work by taking a semi-honest protocol and compile it to malicious security. And so if we uh, instantiate the underlying semi-honest protocol with the best uh, semi-honest protocol that are out there, the protocols that are out there, then we obtain a maliciously secured protocol where each party is required to send less than 1.5 elements per multiplication gate. Uh, now there has been uh, several others paper recently that uh, achieved similar results. So I want to explain now the differences between our results and their results. So for security with a board, there are two relevant papers, the paper of uh, Bonetal from Crypto19 and the paper of Goyal and Song from this year. 
Uh, as you can see from this table, so the um, protocol of our protocol and the protocol of Bonetal works over both rings and fields, while the protocol of Guyan and Song work over fields. Uh, our protocol and the protocol of Guyan and Song is for arbitrary number of parties, and the Bonet et al. protocol is for constant number of parties. If we look at the communication cost additive term, which is the communication cost that is added when moving from semi-honest to malicious security. So in all three papers, it is sublinear in the size of the circuit. However, in our protocol and, and in the protocol of Grial and Sound, it is logarithmic in the size of the circuit. And in the protocol of Bonetta, it is square root of the, in the size of the circuit. And if we look at the number of rounds that is added, again, when moving from semi-honest to malicious security, so in our uh, work and in the work of Bonetta, it is constant. And in the work of Brian and Song, it is logarithmic in the size of the circuit. For full security, there is one relevant paper, another paper of Goyalta from this year. Uh, as you can see from this comparison, our work has the advantage of working over both fields and rings and that the communication cost matches the cost of the best semi-honest protocol in our setting, which, which allows use of a PRG. On the other hand, the protocol of Gayatal has an advantage over our protocol uh, in allowing arbitrary number of parties. However, their communication cost does not match the cost of the best semi-honest protocol in their setting, which is information theoretic. And in particular, they require uh, sending two, uh, two additional field elements where cheating uh, occurs. So I hope this explains uh, the differences between our results and uh, these uh, recent results. Uh, so the high level approach in our construction uh, works as follows. So we compute the circuit using a, a protocol which only achieves privacy. And then we run a verification uh, step where the parties verify the correctness of the computation uh, using a tool, a tool called distributed zero knowledge proofs uh, due to Bonetal. And this uh, tool allows us to run this verification uh, step with sublinear communication cost. And we show, uh, we present new, way, new ways to use this tool in the context of verification, which have, uh, has better concrete efficiency compared to previous work and allow, allow us to extend the uh, security from security with a boat to full security. Um, the high level idea of, of our verification step, uh, so, in the verification step, we basically need to verify many multiplication triples, right? The parties hold many multiplication triples. Uh, each the parties hold secret sharing of all the inputs and the output of each multiplication gate, and they want to verify that all of these are correct. So at a very high level, what we want to do, what we want to do is the parties to locally compute a random linear combination of the differences between the output and the multiplication of the inputs. And the main observation, the first observation is that the parties can locally compute an additive sharing of this value, which we call V. Uh, this is true in the honest majority setting. However, uh, the parties cannot simply open v, an additive sharing of V because it's not robust and, and the corrupted parties can open it to any value they want. So what we ask the parties to do is, is now secret share the additive sharings. Uh, to the, all the other parties. Now, of course, the parties can cheat in this step. So here is where we use a, a distributed zero knowledge proof and let each party prove that it shared the correct value. And since the local computation of each party when computing the additive sharing is a degree two computation over inputs that are robustly shared across the parties, we can use a distributed zero knowledge proof with a sublinear cost. And so once the party proved that they share the correct value, the parties can simply locally the robust secret shares of all the additive shares, obtain a robust secret sharing of V, and then open it and check that it equals uh, to zero. If it equals to zero, then we, then we know with high probability that uh, all the triples are correct. And if not, we know that uh, at least one of the, one of the triples is, is incorrect. Uh, yeah, of course we have uh, to, to extend it to full security. There are many, um, there are many issues that you need to, to, take, to handle, to identify cheaters, to remove them, and so on and so forth. And with this, I will end my talk. So uh, thank you very much for listening. The, the paper is, of course, on ePrint. Thank you. Are there any questions? Ariel, can you uh, 
say something about the meat by uh, distributor zero and non proof? Again, excuse me? Can you explain what you mean by distributed uh, zero knowledge proof? Yes, so uh, this is a setting where you have one prover and you have many verifiers and the prover want to prove some statement uh, which is uh, distributed across the parties. So in the context of our work, it means that uh, prover has some input and this input is signature between the parties and you want to prove some statement over this input. And for certain statements, uh, we can have a zero knowledge proof with which sublinear communication cost, uh, and we and we use this in our work. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Any question to the speaker or to the speaker of the entire session? Okay, so if there are no questions, we'll end the session. Thank you very much to the speakers.